I'm recording this video in July 2022 and Squarespace has just rolled out a new page editor called Fluid Engine. Now this change is happening on all Squarespace 7.1 websites. So if you're on Squarespace 7.0 or earlier, you're not going to need to worry about this. You're going to be using Classic Engine from here on out. But if you are on Squarespace 7.1, things are changing. So if you haven't seen it yet, the next time that you start a new template or create a new page or create a new section on a page, that's going to automatically be created in Fluid Engine. So today I wanted to walk you through the basics of how Fluid Engine works. And I also wanted to show you how you can still for now access classic editor sections, just in case you think that might be a little faster for a specific thing you're going to be doing. So let's go ahead and just pick a starting template here. And one of the big changes is that with Classic Engine, you had a 12 column grid and you would use spacer blocks to position things. And whenever you moved an element, it actually affected the it affected the size or location of other elements. Now that is no longer the case. Elements don't influence one another in Fluid Engine. So let's go ahead and log in here. And if I click edit, you'll notice off the bat that there are a few things that are different. So for this section, you can see that instead of having insertion points, there is an add block in the upper left. And if I click edit section, while background and colors are the same as they were, format is different now. So I'm going to first walk you through format, show you what that does, and then we'll dive into adding some blocks. So for row count, that is how tall your essentially your artboard is on the page. So here it's set to six. I can make it taller, which makes the page or the section longer. So let's go ahead and put it back to six. You can see this grid on my screen here. Um, it may be easier to see it actually on this section. Uh, let's try a white section. That's probably the easiest to see the grid. Okay, so you can see a grid here on this section. It is a 24 column grid now. You can make the grid tight or loose and that's going to affect um, how you're positioning your blocks, um, how uh, tight you want them to the grid. So you can also ch arrange the grid um, so that the spacing is different for horizontal and vertical um, elements as well. So I could go tight grid, loose grid, or change things individually. We also have section fill screen here. Now if I turn that off, what that means is that my artboard is tight to the top and bottom of this section. It's kind of like page height or section height was before in classic editor. So I turn that on. Small gives you the same thing, but I could also make this medium to add some space to the top and bottom, or you can make it large. And then you can also change the alignment of this artboard within the section. I don't know what language Squarespace is using for this, maybe grid, but I'm going to call it artboard because it's where we're going to do our work. So that is a walkthrough of format. So let's go back to our first section here. And you can see that I have a text block and I can drag that around within the grid. Now this grid, let's look at how our page section is set up. So we've got six rows and we have aligned things to the bottom and we have an 80% height. So if I made this shorter and align this to the center, and gave us a medium height, things would look a little different. So you can play around with that and see how it works. I'm going to get rid of this button for now, and I want to focus on this text block. So actually, let's get rid of this text block, and we're going to add our own. So let's go ahead and add a block. Whenever you add a block, it's going to appear in the upper left corner of your artboard of your grid, and you can uh, click with your cursor inside, and you can say something like no code goodness code drag and drop editor here and I'm going to center this I'm gonna make it heading one and then it kind of remains in the size of this text box so for our text what we can do is we can drag the text box 
so that we have the exact size we want for it. And I want to center this on my grid. So if you hit G on your keyboard, it's going to display the grid. And I want to make sure that I have an even number of columns for this text block, otherwise I won't be able to center it. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so now I can center it and I can drag and drop it. And you can see the center line is right here and my center points are aligned with it. And I can also drag this down so that it's centered top to bottom as well. Now a new addition to text blocks and a lot of the blocks, and you'll actually see this on classic editor as sections as well if you have Fluid Engine enabled on your site, is that you can add a background. And this is something I'm pretty excited about because I used to custom code this. So you can add a background and you can also add a corner radius to it as well. And if you don't want it to be a solid color, you can adjust that in site style. So let's just really quickly hop over to our site styles. This is dark one. We'll hop into dark one and I'll click on my background and it's going to give me the color. And then here's the transparency option. So I can make this semi-transparent. You can play with that until you get the look that you want. So I am pretty excited about that. So let's go to done and save. And in addition to having uh, just regular text blocks now without um, and positioning them however you want by dragging the size of the text block, you can also overlay elements. So let's go ahead and add an image here. And I'm going to just uh, have a burst in my downloads that I'm going to add here. So if you wanted to pop this to, let's get rid of this text block for now. You could pop this here and you could arrange this in front of it with a background if you wanted. And let's send the burst behind. So now it's hidden and let's go back to our text background and add some padding and border radius of 20. So one really nice thing is that you can now layer elements. And it takes a while to get it adjusted exactly like you want sometimes, but it's fun to be able to do that here instead of inside Canva. So before Fluid Engine, if I wanted to have a layered element of images, I would have to do that in Canva and then bring it in. But here, what we can do is we can just grab some images. Let me find something here. Let's find hike. Um, this looks good. And when you have an image block, you have an option now of uh, in the design panel of choosing it to fit the space that you've created, which make sure that you see the whole image or if you click fill it's going to crop part of it out but it's going to fill that whole area you can also do shapes so let's go ahead and do a funky shape here so we could have this laid overlaid here and then stack our burst behind it and move this guy around so you can see there's a lot you can do playing with this one other change is that you can also add an image block and have it full bleed. So another thing that I used to use code for was creating split screen sections, but now what you can do is you can add an image block and make it halfway across, top to bottom, and then if we go back to edit section and we turn off fill screen, we're going to get this. So let's go ahead and just add some more space around things by using the drag and drop handle and then we're going to move this down this down and this down i really hope that they come out with the ability to group items soon that's something i would really welcome and now this is going to be the full height of the section and we're going to send it to the back and i'll add my image now so let's go ahead and go to content go to browse stock images and let's do another hike photo i don't know so much hiking oh that's cool 
we'll pop that in the background. So this will be a split screen essentially without having to code using an image block or two sections. And um, that is pretty nifty. Let's go ahead and I want that to be taller and I want this to be taller and I want to move this down and these guys down too. So lots of fun things that you can do here with Fluid Engine that required code before. So just the fact that we can layer elements, we can do split screen, we can add background colors to lots of different kinds of blocks. That is really awesome to be able to do without code and especially creating any kind of full bleed content. So you could also do full bleed in another way here. So, you know, you could do something that's just hanging out over here by itself as well. It doesn't have to go across the whole screen. So let's just add an image here and we're going to make that fill. So you can do some fun stuff. And you know, I would probably, if I were designing, I'd probably stack something else on top of this so it didn't look so lonely, but this is getting pretty crazy busy. So we will go ahead and move on from here. Another important thing that you need to be aware of when you're building in Fluid Engine is that there is separate mobile editing. So let's go ahead and I'm going to save this for now. And then we're going to go ahead and hop over into our mobile engine. So if I click edit and I click mobile view, what you'll see is that mobile actually stacks your items in the order in which you added them to the page. So what you'll need to do is rebuild the section on mobile for a mobile experience. Right now you can't hide elements on mobile, so I don't think I'd want all of this stuff on mobile. So what you can do is you can just stick something behind another thing um, to kind of free up some space. So I'm going to move this here. I'm going to move my image over here. And I'm going to have that go behind. And I'm going to add do the same thing here and have this overlay and uh, I may just like I don't even know if I need these so I might just stick them here and put that in the back and then I'm gonna hide this guy behind that one on mobile um, and then you have a bunch of extra space so what you can do is just drag and shorten that up now I want to go back and make sure nothing changed on my desktop. Nope, it didn't. It looks good. So now I'm going to go to done and save. So just be aware that there is the ability to edit separately on mobile. So if you aren't quite ready to go all in with Fluid Engine yet, good news. You can still add classic editor sections to your 7.1 website. So let me show you where those are, and it will give you an opportunity to you know, keep building your site and um, making changes and having a chance to play with Fluid Engine before you commit to it. So let's go ahead and add a section here. And if you add a blank section or any of these pre-made sections, those are all Fluid Engines. But if you scroll to the very bottom, there is the option to add a classic editor blank section. And when I roll over here, you can see I have a text block. So this is a classic text block. And you can see that I have insertion points. So I can add a spacer here and I could add a normal image block here and make it um, a card if I wanted. So this works like you're used to it working. And then later when you're ready to move to Fluid Engine, what you do is you're just going to click upgrade on the section and you'll notice now that this is text blocks, an image block, there's no space or block, it's just empty space and another text block here. So this will become a Fluid Engine section. So that's the basics for Fluid Engine for Squarespace 7.1. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, I would love for you to comment below and let me know what do you love about Fluid Engine? What are your frustrations with Fluid Engine? Um, let me know what you think. Looking forward to hearing from you and I wish you the best of luck with your website.